All right, so I've got three minutes. I'm going to take a minute and a half for me, and then I'm going to give you guys a minute and a half, and we'll go on vacation together. So I'm a generous <laughs> guy. So life is a collection of moments, from intimate moments from our childhood to shared famous moments. Moments shape the way we visualize history and create memories. Yeah. Okay. Time Looper is a location-based first reality platform that's changing the way we experience history and visualize moments. Visitors to the most incredible sites in the world can relive moments that shaped those places and made them famous. Time Looper is currently live in London and we launched in New York last week at TechCrunch Battlefield. One of our partners in London is Tower Bridge. When visitors arrive to Tower Bridge, they have the opportunity to purchase a Time Looper experience. With that Time Looper experience, they receive a cardboard, download the Time Looper app, and can travel back in time and relive the Great Fire of 1666. Visitors at Tower Bridge love their experience. They love it so much that on average they visit two and a half other sites that Time Looper offers within the city. So we are now creating a network within the city and driving users to particular places. Every year, the top 100 sites see 1 billion visitors, and that's a $100 billion in tourism revenue. Imagine exploring all these places with Time Looper. So at each site, you can go back and relive the moment that made that place great. So Time Looper's initial foray has been in tourism, but there are other applications of our content. So, for example, Google wants to use our content in Google Expedition and allow students in the classroom to relive the moments that they're studying in their textbooks. CNN partnered with Time Looper and they hired us to produce content for their series, The 80s, produced by Tom Hanks. So they did the 60s last year, 62 years ago, 70s last year, this would do the 80s. We allowed viewers to go back and relive the death of John Lennon, the Challenger crash, and the fall of the Berlin Wall. So it's my minute and a half. Here's yours. It is. So we both produce and we host content. Seems like it's pretty costly to create that much content. So our chief creative officer is an award-winning director from Istanbul. He won uh, Best Film at the Istanbul Film Festival two years ago. He won Best Screenwrite two, three years ago. And yeah, so he's been an independent film, fi film yeah. producer in Istanbul. The beauty of being an indie film producer in Istanbul is that you have to learn how to do everything. So he's not the best director, he's not the best at production, he's not the best at post-production, but he's the only one that's doing it in the VR space very, very well, all of okay. us, which makes him a great source for pulling the right strings so in the industry. Is there an AR spin here versus a VR spin? So that you're looking at the actual reality and then it's, you have some, some AR on it versus completely being separated and, and looking at a film? Mm -hmm. So the fact that it's location-based kind of treads the line between AR and VR. Yeah. So when you're in Times Square, what you're seeing is actually what's in front of you. The difference is that the AR is not, the phone knows the orientation that you're looking at. Oh, so, uh, so actually when you're looking at the Empire State Building, you're looking at the yes. Empire State Building yes. in reality. Yes. Oh, that's right. But it's not displayed through the camera no, on your I, phone. I understand, so but, but I didn't realize it was linked up like that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. How are you going to scale? 
So we launched our bid in London. We have the top four sites on in London. We, again, launched in New York last week at TechCrunch Battlefield. So people focus on users. I don't focus on users at this point. I focus on sites as my network. So for example, Towerbridge. Towerbridge sees a million visitors a year. Our market penetration price at three pounds is 23.5%. Conservatively, we'll call that 20%. That's 200,000 users I'm picking up at Tower Bridge, and I've not spent a dime on marketing or advertising. How much did it cost you to come up with that time square? $27,500. How long did it take you? Uh, about, about two months, we were producing five other videos at the same time. Wow. What's the revenue model? So the, we make money a few different ways. Um, we do top-up expenses at sites, so that's either, either in addition to a ticket price or it can be embedded in the ticket price if, it's, if the content's paid for by the user. Um, we also do advertising lead generation. So if you think about what marketers want to know, if you watch one of our videos, let's say that you're in Trafalgar Square and you're reliving the blitz. We know you, you logged in with Facebook. We know who you are. We know where you are. We know what you're thinking. We know that you're a 60-year-old gentleman from the United States who likes history, <laughs> who likes history, and we know it's 11:45 uh, in the afternoon. Maybe you want to go visit a historic cafe that's around the street, or maybe you want to see Alexander Hamilton tonight. Yeah. For me, it's the Sea Bird on 52nd Street. Yeah. <laughs> the point is, you 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 have a ton of information. I think you had a question. Yes, sir. Is all of your content production based? And what I mean by that is, when I read the synopsis, I, I thought, let's say I'm in, in Denver and it's 1860, and I, I look through that and I see what it looked like back then when it was a cow town. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I expected versus a production that you put together. Yeah, so again, we, we treat our content around moments. So we think moments are more powerful than just seeing something. So in that clip, for example, you saw what New York looked like in, 19, in 1945, but you also saw the VJ Day Kiss. You saw people that were ecstatic at the end of World War II. So we showed you both a place and we conveyed a moment or emotion, which we think is more powerful. But for example, we also do, we capture histories not just 2,000 years ago. I also had a woman come over from the Netherlands to film the London Marathon. So when you're a, a tourist in August, you know that London is the fourth or fifth largest international race. Perhaps you're curious what it would look like to be at the finish line of the London Marathon. So it's history of 2,000 years ago and history of yesterday. And there, it's a video, right? So how, how long typically are you guys aiming to have that video? Does it vary by location or moment? Like, just curious. Have as in host or have as in how long is the video? Like to, to produce it, yeah. Or I mean um, as in like me experiencing it. Does, yeah. yeah. So people are visual and they're lazy nowadays. So all of our clips are between 60 seconds to two minutes. Great. That's all you need to show an emotion and create a moment. Mm -hmm. Great. And this is all iOS? iOS and Android. Got it. We use uh, Unity, which is a gaming software to produce our content. And so the revenue think? model? So I'm sorry? The revenue model? Uh, so I touched on a, a few streams of monetization earlier, but it's um, top-up expenses on site or fees paid to us if it's embedded in content. So for example, if you go to the Coliseum, it's typically $8 to go to the Coliseum. The site can choose to charge you $10 and then they just pass on that expense to their customer effectively. But, uh, but a top-up expense and advertising. So the lead generation that I described earlier was we have this information about you that we can use to make suggestions about where you go next or what you do. And if that's booked through our application, then we get a piece of the revenue. One thing I didn't mention is there's also, we also have unlocked trailers. So we have four videos for the top four sites in London. We also have a trailer for London that's unlocked. You don't have to be in that particular place to view the content, which serves to lead people to travel to certain destinations. Mm, okay. So the power of location-based virtual reality is that we control the flow of users to different sites. So we, we embed ourselves in the tourism supply chain. We're not disrupting anyone, we're creating value for the industry. We don't, you, people don't use this instead of listening to audio guides or they aren't using Time Looper instead of traveling to London to visit Trafalgar Square and Tower Bridge. We think just because you can view what a place looks like online through Google Maps or something like that doesn't mean you're not going to want to walk the streets of Paris with a loved one or go to the Eiffel Tower or things like that. Okay. So we're really pretty early with VR, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, including myself, feel like it's going to be really big, really fast. 
you obviously have some some uniqueness in location, content, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But how crowded is this going to get, and how difficult is it for you to succeed when Google and Facebook and everyone out there? I mean, you're using a Google device. There'll be a lot of probably inexpensive mm -hmm. uh, VR devices. I mean, what do you think is the, the relationship between go to market for you and competitive atmosphere where it's going to be flooded with lots of VR and alternatives? Mm -hmm. um, so first off, that's an unpatented piece of cardboard. Google doesn't have a patent on the cardboard. So we produce that. That's not produced by Google. Huh. We produce it in Eastern Europe, Europe, and it cost us a pound and a half to produce. Oh, cool. Um, so it's, your own, it's your own piece, huh? That's a time loop cardboard, not a Google card. <laughs> I'll, okay. give you, I'll give you one if you want it. I'll give it to you right now. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, about, this, about, this space in, about the space in general. Yeah. So one, I don't know of anyone doing this. Uh, two, it's also somewhat of a land grab, right? So that's why I talked about users or network in the sense of sites. I'm not worried about how many people are downloading the app right now. I'm worried about how many sites and what sites I have in each of these particular cities. Yeah. So, um, you know, for example, in London, we already have the top four sites in London on our platform. Yeah. So, someone c tomorrow could create a better product, but if they already, if we already have deals negotiated with these sites, there's nothing for them to do. So, is there a combination between your two models, though? Because the things you're doing for CNN and others, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I wasn't kidding before. I'd love to see famous jazz people mm -hmm. in, in on 52nd Street in, in Times Square, but you don't maybe want to do that for the general market. But a particular you know, downbeat magazine wants to do that, and so therefore you just delve into that niche through that kind of sponsorship model versus these kind of uh, site-specific models. It's more through the you know the, the points of interest that people gather around. Is yeah, that something and you're, you're thinking about. Absolutely. So I also I didn't touch on this earlier because we're focusing on tourism right now, but so we're working with. I'm just not going to look about the same deal with Macy's. Macy's wants to drive tourists in New York into their stores. Mm -hmm. So we're creating content for Macy's to allow them, allow their patrons to see what it's like to be or shop at Macy's in 1945 or the late 1800s. People don't. My mom people, worked there in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pe people don't realize that you know, 100 years ago, people used to go to Macy's to buy cows and to get milk. <laughs> right now, it's a department store. That's, so that, not, that's not where she worked. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's a cool little niche that they can explore and use to get people in their stores. Once people are in their stores, it's up to them to sell them stuff. Thank you. How much revenue did you generate from the top four sites in London last month? Uh, so we have been, so up until two weeks ago, we hadn't decided on pricing. I was there about yeah, three and a half weeks ago doing pricing elasticity studies. So we decided on three pounds. We've been live at Tower Bridge for three pounds for about three weeks. Um, we are, we have not made up our original investment yet, but we will within probably another three or four weeks. That's great. Um, so we, we I, did, I can go into this too. So um, our revenue models, we capture 100% of revenue until we recoup cost, and then we revenue share with the site again, which is what which is what incentivizes them to sell and promote Time Looper, and which is why I don't have any one staff right now for marketing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.